But I'll stop talking about those so very 2012 issues now. You didn't come here to listen to me talk about the past or even the present. You came here today to dream with me about what we can imagine together. So let the Shakers dance lyrics ask us to turn, turn. Let's all do that. Let's turn away from the past. Come and vision the future with me. This is New Year's Day and we all resolve to lose 15 pounds. <laughs> this is having a new Secretary of State and there really can be peace in the Middle East. This is the spring of our campus renewal. Everything is green and growing, fresh and hopeful. Imagine with me, what will the memories be for a Redland student 100 years from now? The past 20 Appleton years have seen an absolute have seen an absolute <laughs> Wow, Jim, how'd you do that? <laughs> Up in the sound booth, could I have that too? Actually, we've lost our sound, is that right? Yes. Yes. All right. The last Jim Appleton years have seen an absolute physical transformation of this campus greater than in its previous 90 years. Can you hear me in the balcony? Yeah. yeah. It's become the most beautiful campus one can imagine. Oh, we're back, thank God. And I owe a debt of gratitude to Jim for returning the sound system. <laughs> what next? Robert Kennedy's most famous line was, some men see things as they are and ask why. I dream things that never were and ask, why not? That's the thinking of a visionary. And while I don't claim to be even a dim shadow of such a great man, I do constantly look to the future to see how we can continue to evolve. If there's one thing I've learned in my career in academic medicine, it's that trends in medicine are almost always followed a decade later by parallel trends in higher education. So here's the future of your health care your health care in a decade or so. You and I will have digital sensors the size of a pea implanted under our skin that will monitor the hundreds of blood substances in our metabolome and the organisms in our entire microbiome. They will be smart sensors like those that monitor freeway traffic in real time. Massive data crunching of hundreds of thousands of such sensors across the globe will create new algorithms that tell physicians how to manage difficult but common health problems. Those algorithms will continuously update like the smart electric grid and will continually evolve with new research. Yes, our physicians will still talk to us and still practice the art of medicine, but they will become more like coaches as we become increasingly responsible for our own wellness and possession of our own medical data. So how will those trends in massive data and digitalization and internationalization combined with the preservation of the art play out in higher education? Two years ago, my colleagues here conducted a survey of faculty wishes or dreams of what they would envision might help them better perform their mission as teacher scholars. Those were aspirational goals. To implement them all, it was estimated it would cost between 450 and 700 million dollars, depending on how you count. These are certainly large numbers, but that should not deter us at all. I will tell you all today that the campaign for Redlands started the day you called me last June 2nd and asked me to serve as your president. I started dreaming with you that very day. I see in that campaign a revitalization of the quality of liberal arts. 
but it won't be your father's liberal arts. We will ask students to acquire 21st century skills. What do I mean? If I could, I'd reach back to Tom's UVA and teleport Thomas Jefferson onto the current Redlands faculty. Rest assured, he would teach not only the classical liberal arts of mathematics, astronomy, music, grammar, logic, and rhetoric, and by the way, he could do it all, but also the 20th century liberating domains of philosophy, history, literature, languages, natural and physical sciences, and psychology. But I'm absolutely certain that Jefferson, a highly creative architect, would be teaching far more. He would be extolling what Michael Statton of the Facebook spin-off Integral has called the new liberal arts of our time. Graphic design, animation, photographic and video production, geo design, public policy, comprehensive computational and communicative skills, and modern data literacy, especially statistical inference, data storage and management, algorithms, and information design. And our faculty, who I want to say are really among the best and most noble of the prof professoriate I have known, could add a surfeit of even better ideas. Faculty, you've turned out in record numbers today, and I take special notice of that and appreciate that vote of hope. You've already begun innovating with visual and media studies and the diffusion of spatial learning into virtually every corner of the curriculum, whether anthropology, English, history, race and ethnic studies, and religion. And the students in the audience, they actually know and live what I'm talking about. And their generation will teach what we cannot even conceive. They will do so because their education will be global in ways we cannot imagine. Friends, it's just so obvious what we must do to internationalize. We live on the Pacific Rim with a third of the Earth's population across the pond. Many of them ready and anxious to try out something they cannot get at home, an American liberal arts education. And we've ignored the obvious neighbors to the South, where the world's largest, sixth largest economy in Brazil has the most college ready, most able to afford, presidentially supported, and willing to come students of any developed country. We owe it to our current students to provide the peer group that will give them a global perspective and help turn them into citizens of the world. I can imagine a very different physical future for us as well. Many of you know the old 1950 George Armacost story of his meeting young John Townsend just off the train bewildered and on the steps of the administration building. The venerable president invited the 17-year-old stranger to breakfast, got him admitted, and decades later, the then Reverend John Townsend became a trustee and a member of the Kortner Society for his integrity and philanthropic spirit. Stand up, John, and be recognized on behalf of all alums out there. I have a dream that within a decade, a young woman will step off the light rail extension of the Metrolink, ending at the new University Village Station. She will find herself on our new Progressive South Campus and be exploring the most impressive, advanced college community she could ever imagine. She will be coming here to study in our five-year-old program in geodesign. So what's the buzzword geodesign? Well, 
Maybe we'll know it by what it isn't. The metaphor for how 20th century designers envisioned our environment might be cell towers with plastic palm trees attached. <laughs> You've seen them. 21st century geodesign, however, encompasses planning and design practices that are supported by entirely new and always changing geospatial tools. Designers apply their traditional professional practices of sketching, iterations, collaboration, and feedback, but they undergird it with a rich collection of relevant and massive data sets that represent both the natural and the social world. These are the tools of geographic information science in an era of, of so-called big data complexity. It's the design side of art, but fully integrated into systems thinking, information technology, and environmental sensitivity. That university village our 17-year-old enters will, in fact, be the archetype in our region of the application of geodesign principles and futuristic thinking. Imagine a marvel of the most current, sustainable, and energy self-sufficient college towns. With all the usual accoutrements of pubs and fine dining and boutiques, but a wholesome green grocer who sells the best seafood produce and organic teas. A bookstore, if they still exist, with coffee, of course coffee, and open green spaces where casual musicians play and groups perform in the evening. Our Glenn Wallachs and Frederick Lowe theaters are right next door. And the adjacent new building for 3D arts has an outdoor sculpture garden and art gallery overlooking a lake. We'll have the best living spaces for both our younger faculty and those 30-something grad students from our world-class master's programs in public policy, geodesign, fine arts entrepreneurship, the business of theater, and educational justice. I can see the path along the Sankey, the creek down toward town. It's now a tree-lined green, the fully realized orange blossom trail. Town and gown united. Redlands historian Larry Burgess will write that the University Village at U of R Station has become the place to be. An older generation talked about going to college. College is a place to go and then leave. In the future, they'll talk about University Station as the place to be, a destination. It's vintage Redlands, a just right place with the arts, trees, and the amenities that entice the most talented, newly recruited staff to the Esri Corporation and U of R, the two largest Redlands employers, into a village that is as advanced and sustainable as the new cities of the desert of Abu Dhabi, or as regenerative as the new Los Angeles 50 miles to the west, where Lillian Disney some 20 years ago envisioned a renewal of downtown LA, donated funds to build the Walt Disney Concert Hall, and sparked the Grand Avenue project. If you visited lately, you can't help but see Lillian's dream materializing. Imagine, just imagine. Our university is real estate rich by about 28 contiguous acres and can make a huge contribution to the Redlands community by making it available for private development. This can be a win-win for all, creating essential new revenue streams for the university and quality private development for the community. It can be accomplished, I guarantee you, through a diversified funding portfolio of private investors' equity, federal and state transportation support, HUD grants, state loans and tax offsets, 
regional transportation authority grants, new market tax credits, philanthropy from donors who otherwise might be unlikely to give, land rents, savings from increased efficiency in the use of energy and materials, and the university's valuable real estate, as well as the offering plate that is about to be passed. <laughs> Our university is an integrating force in this community. What better way to be that than by creating a quality of life initiative to attract quality talent? And that 17-year-old woman who stepped off the light rail, because she will have become so successful, and because our alums are so grateful for their transformative experience here, she will, in 50 years, be the greatest philanthropist in our history. But surely you of the faculty, you students, and my colleagues on the trustees, you have dreams too. Let's dream together and continue to ask, why not? To all of you gathered here today, it won't always be pomp and circumstance. We will almost certainly face a tough time or two together, and from time to time may even dislike one another, hard as that is to imagine right now. <laughs> but the essential point is this, that we are all in this together, acting in good faith and good conscience. Today is a new day, and may we simply set out right now to make it work for the love of the University of Redlands. In my heart, I committed that to you today as I took an oath to serve you. At last night's concert in this very hall, a composer spoke these words. At the start of life, all doors are flung open wide. Every future is possible. Every choice presents itself. So begins this season. So come with me, if you will, as we jump off together into the dreams of our future. Let's remember what Cornell West said about faith. We've forgotten that a rich life consists fundamentally of serving others trying to leave the world a little better than you found it. In many instances, we will be stepping out on nothing and just hoping to land on something. Listen closely to the music that ends our event today, a lyric that refers to laughing. Let us take seriously our relationship together, and yes, let us be impassioned by the visions we dream, but let's always feel like laughing together at ourselves, never taking ourselves so seriously that we forget this moment, this feeling, this spring. Thank you. If you are my parents, please stand and stay standing. If you can stand. And, and if you are my wife, please stand and stay standing. And if you are my children, and grandchildren, please stand and stay standing. If you are my brother and sister and their families, stand and stay standing. If you are that friend, 
who experienced with me my very first day in kindergarten. Stand and stay standing. If, if you are my friends from high school days, stand and stay standing. Relax, I got 1,300 more to go. <laughs> if your picture is on my office wall of fame, that's you, David Cole, and Marlene Ross. Dave Cole. <laughs> if, if you have ever been and still are a pastor and mentor of mine, stand. Bob Lawrence in the back. And if you are here from Rochester, New York, yes, Doug Lowry, Dean of the Eastman School, Sue Stewart, General Counsel Emeritus, and Birch Griggs, President of the American Academy of Neurology, and Peter Dubois, host of NPR's With Heart and Voice, stand and stay standing. And if you have traveled here and you've come a great distance from the state of Connecticut, Yale's Susan Gibbons, or Indiana, President David Dawson, or the state of Pennsylvania, Gary Romano and Leslie Ching, or Missouri, Nancy Farmer, or DC, or Oregon, or Washington, Colorado, and the great state of Idaho, stand and stay standing. Now, if you are my boss, a trustee in whose stewardship we will all thrive and who, whose pleasure I will serve, stand and stay standing. And if you are a faculty member here at Redlands, you're everywhere. Stand and stay standing. If you are an alumna or alumnus of Redland or a member of the community of Redlands or just today wandered in and have become a new friend of this university and somehow I forgot you, please stand and stay standing. And if you are a student at Redlands, Stand and shout out loud the octamali and let it be heard at Oxy. <laughs> octamali, gazali, gazump, de yump, de yadi, yahoo. Ink de mink, de yadi, gazink, de yump, de ray, yahoo. Wing, wang, tricky, tracky, poo, foo, juicy, woozy, skizzle, wazzle, wang, tang, orky, porky, dominorky, redlands, run, run, redlands. And that, my friends, is how you give yourself a standing ovation.